Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. Okay, enough of warm-up problems, let's try to solve something substantial. So as you can see, I solved uh, some of those problems, but I solved them just to prepare for this video. So grading students. Basically, they set up their lore. There is a university with some particular grading policy, and you are given a set of grades, just an array of grades from 0 to 100, and you just have to round them up. But you have to round them up according to the following rules. At the difference between the grade and the next multiple of 5 is less than 3, round the grade up to the next multiple of 5. If the value of the grade is less than 38, no writing occurs and the result will still be failing grade. What we have to do, we have to just go through each grade, round each value according to these two rules and print out the result of them rounded up. That's pretty much the entire problem, so you don't have to read like everything here, I just explained you what it is. So since we're solving some problem for a set of numbers, let's try to solve that particular problem for a single number. Let's create a function around the 5. It's a pretty simple function. It takes one integer and produces another integer. So in Haskell, there is a really interesting syntax which allows you to dispatch control flow according to different conditions. For example, you put a bar here and you write your condition here. You may have actually several conditions. And what that means? That means when this function is invoked, it will sequentially check each condition and if the condition is true, it will execute that branch, forgetting everything else. So we're going to use that to implement these two conditions. First, we have to calculate somehow the next multiple of 5 of the grade. To do that, we have to understand modular arithmetic. Particularly, we we're going to use the mod operator. In most of the languages, it's usually denoted by percent, but in Haskell, we have a special function called mod which takes two numbers and produces another one. And to solve that problem, to find the next multiple of five, you have to understand how this operator works. So, to understand how the modular operator works, we have to understand how division works. Let's take a closer look at the division operation. Imagine that you have 10 objects. And you need to divide these 10 objects by 5. What you do, you count 5 objects, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you separate them from the rest of the pile. And you repeat that procedure again, and you count how many piles you have. You have two piles. That means 10 divided by 5 is 2. This is roughly how the division is defined. But imagine if you have 12 objects, and you want to divide these 12 objects by 5. What you do, you do the same operation. You count 5 objects, and you separate them from the pile. You do that again again and you separate them from the pile, but you are left with two objects and they don't fit into the pile of five. That's the result of modular operation 12 mod 5. That's what it is. That's the point of the reminder and that's the point of the modular operator. So you see, to get to the next multiple of 5, you actually have to add 3 objects. So the next multiple of 5 is 5 minus x mod 5 plus x. So what do we do here? We calculate the modulo of 5. Basically, we take this number. Then we subtract that number from 5, getting 3. Three. And this is the amount of objects we have to add to get the next multiple of 5. And we just add that amount of objects to the original number. And this is how we get the next multiple of 5. So. Now we have the next multiple of 5 and we can check that the difference between the grade and the next multiple of 5 is less than 3. We can be pretty confident that the next multiple of 5 is going to be bigger than x, so we can safely just subtract x from m5. After that, we check that it's less than 3 and in that case, we return m5. Another condition, if the value of grade is less than 38, we don't round anything. So we just add another condition here, x is less than 38 and we we don't round anything and we can check how it works. For example, we can take some values from the input. So for 73, it should return 75. Round 5, 73. And yes, it does return 75. For 67, it should not round anything. It's going to be 67. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I forgot the else branch. If none of those conditions are true, we don't have to round anything. So yeah, but we can probably just collapse some of these conditions. If x is greater or equal than 32, then we round to the next multiple of 5. Otherwise, we don't do anything. This is how we can reduce uh, redundant operations and stuff. Let's double check. 
73, 67, everything works great. Let's actually check things that are less than 38, for example, 35 or 34. Yeah, it doesn't round anything. So we solved the problem for a single number. So now we have to solve that problem for multiple of them. So let's create a function solve that takes several numbers and solve that problem for all of them. As I already mentioned, we have function map. This function takes another function and applies it to each element of a list. So what we can do, we can take the list and just apply round five to each element of the list. And this is how we solve the problem for several numbers. Basically, this is the solution for this particular problem, but we need to wrap it into interactive program. To make it an interactive program, we have to use our interact function. So as the first step, we have to separate our input by words then we don't really need the first word, which is basically n, the amount of elements. So we just apply tail to it. After that, we have to convert each word into a number, then pipe those numbers through the solution. But this time, the solution is actually several numbers. That means we have to map them into strings. So what we have at the end of the solution, we have just a list of strings, but we need to convert it into a single string of separate lines. In Haskell, we have a a function called unlines, which takes a list of strings and returns a single string. Basically what this function does, it concatenates all of the strings into a single one, separating the elements with the new line like that. It just joins them with new line and we just have to compose that function as well. We can see that this entire solution compiles. Let's actually try to put it here. Let's run it. It passes the sample tests and let's submit it and we solved the problem. Hope that was useful.